Ricky's showing us and making us feel what it was like for him to be growing up in Springfield during a time when there were a lot of socioeconomic changes that created space for gangs to come into his community, and he was feeling trapped. On top of that, his family has a tragedy where he loses three of his siblings in a fire, and he falls into a depression. He's able to convey all of those feelings of being trapped, depression, then he uses music and visual to burst out of that scene through football. All of a sudden, the music picks up. He's running across an open space. And you get this experience of freedom and hope that comes with football for him that brought him out of this time of feeling hopeless and full of despair. You know, I, I choked up watching that film. I still do. Um, when I think about what Ricky went through, I don't think I would get the same experience just reading about it. I get a whole sense of where he grew up, what his family was like, what his sisters looked like, what his football coach looked like. All that comes through in his film. That's very powerful material. Experiential learning is messy, complex, full of dilemmas. It's really whole body learning. It's audio, it's visual, it's emotional, it's in the moment. Through film and video, you can really put the person in that experience with you. Kathleen's approach is wonderful. It's immersive. She has a child who's throwing a tantrum in there. She knew that she had to show that crucial scene in there because she's talking about how important it is to understand what's going through that child's mind and how difficult it is to be a preschool teacher. So she was thinking through, what exactly do I put in this film at this time? These are all skills that the students are learning in the class. And of course, when they get together and talk about it, they say this worked for me or it didn't work for me. And that's all part of the process. There's a wonderful moment there where a mom brings in her child, takes off the coat, Another child comes over, hugs that mom, feels safe with that mom. That mom is completely at home in that classroom. So she shows both sides of how having parents in the classroom can be a positive thing, and then maybe how problems at home do show up in school if there is no parent engagement. Using film and video, people can convey the critical thinking that we often look for in portfolios, that higher level thinking that is required for college level learning to, to get credit for the learning they've achieved. Through film, you can show multiple perspectives on any particular issue. Virginia, for instance, can write about the challenges she has with communication with somebody who might take 20 minutes to communicate one sentence via a visual book. She can describe that, or we can see how long it takes for the person to actually try and flip a page over. With her film, she can create empathy from the viewer for the person she's talking with and for her as the person trying to communicate with her. And empathy is a really important critical thinking skill. With empathy, you have to put yourself in another person's perspective, understand it through their eyes, and then try to solve problems through what you're seeing. And Virginia uses film to accomplish that. Your brother, Craig? Mom? Okay, you want to talk about mom? It comes through that she understands how to talk to her. Well, I'm sure that Virginia didn't talk to the clients, the patients that she works with, like that on day one. She has to understand her clients. And she even talks about how she has to have permission, she doesn't want to use her full name. All that comes through. And when she interviews herself, you can see her thinking about this, that maybe she's actually asking herself questions she hasn't even ever asked herself before. A lot of people have no trouble talking to other people, pulling out answers from them. We do it all the time, that's a conversation. But to turn around and ask yourself a question on film, and know it's gonna be used in your own production, that makes you really assess yourself. And experientially, you're asking yourself, what did I really get out of this? And how can I express that in a way? So when somebody sits down and does a self-interview, they're really struggling. 
How do I set it up? What's my location? How do I look? But also, how do I speak to this in a way that's honest and true to myself? If you don't know too much about the timber rattlesnake, some of the comments might sound pretty logical to oneself, but fear has the ability to convince the mind that what they're thinking are indeed facts or some of the irrational fears that people might perceive are true. And that's not the case. What you see on the screen is the result of a long writing process. The first thing we ask the students to do is to write a one page. What is their idea for this? Basically a pitch. In fact, we even tell them to give us your elevator pitch, you know, in, in one minute or less. Through interviews with and the stories of people of various races, abilities, religions, sexualities, and gender identities, my film, You Don't Belong Here, explores a concept that scientists and activists have recently begun studying, suggesting that it is not macro, but micro interactions, such as face-to-face -face personal conversations in which stories of social oppression can actually impact people, encourage empathy, and motivate changes in oppressive behaviors. Wow. Is it long? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like really it, but it's long. <laughs> and then we say, give us a five-page proposal. And not just the story of the film, but if you had a web page, what would be in that web page? Who are the key interviews? What are the locations? Really think it through. This is not casual, right? This takes a lot of effort. And this is part of media literacy. I think that one thing that people make a big mistake on is they think, well, you know, such and such is just a book or it's just a TV show. Um, but I think that that's a very small-minded idea uh, because really the media that we consume is reflective of our culture and our culture similarly reflects our media. They work together, they affect each other. So if we just sit back and are passive consumers um, when problematic things happen and we don't stop and think and talk about them, then I think that it has really, really bad ramifications on our society as a whole. Film allows students who are auditory learners, visual learners, kinesthetic learners to draw from their strengths and create a film that conveys their experiential learning that will maybe allow them to get more credit than they would have even attempted if they could only do it through writing. They're all working on each other's films. They're all learning from each other. And there's a thrill to that. And if they were doing this in isolation, their films would not be as exciting and they wouldn't get as much out of it. So this is why they come together. Now, I have to say that this is a blended class too. We have students who are in California, in Ohio, in Florida. But through the Zoom technology that we use, we can get them all together. You can see uh, when we teach classes online that these students are watching the films and talking almost as, as well as if they were there in person. So it works. And I know that not every student's gonna leave here and, and get a job as a professional filmmaker. And some of them will use video and filmmaking in their work, but a lot of them will come out of it with just better understanding of the world around them. How media is made, how news is made, how documentaries are made, how films are made. And that's an important skill for everybody to have.